In this video, we're diving into some mind-blowing theories from Japan that are not well known in the U.S. We'll explore why Zoro's notorious lack of direction might be more than just a quirky trait, delve into his family background and its intriguing connection to matching numbers, and uncover the symbolic elements of the moon and death woven into his character. So if you find yourself amazed at just how deep Zoro's fate could be, hit the like button and subscribe. And if you're shocked by the secrets hidden within Zoro's character, drop a comment, secret uncovered. Let's get started. Zoro is known for his poor sense of locality, a fact that has become almost synonymous with his character. But have you ever wondered why Ichiro Oda, the author, chose to portray Zoro in this way? It'll be an intriguing thought, with Zoro, you never really know where he'll end up next, adding an unpredictable element to his character. The frequent depiction of Zoro's directional challenges is not just for comedic effect. There's a deeper significance to it. Zoro embodies the spirit of leaving things to chance. He's even quoted saying, Leave it to me, to luck, highlighting his reliance on fortune. This trait is vividly illustrated during his visit to Logitown, the gateway to the Grand Line, where he acquires a new sword. In a memorable scene, Zoro challenges his fate, saying, Let's see which is stronger, my luck or this. It's a testament to Zoro's character, where luck plays a pivotal role. The association of Zoro with luck is further reinforced by his very name, reminiscent of matching numbers, or Zoro, in Japanese, suggesting a play on luck and chance. Delving into Zoro's lineage reveals more about this connection. His father is Roronora Arashi, and his grandfather, Roronoa Pinzoro. Arashi refers to a specific role in the Japanese dice game, Chinchinarin, symbolizing matched numbers akin to rolling doubles. Similarly, Pinzoro represents the occurrence of rolling triple ones, another form of matching numbers in dice games. These references in Zoro's background subtly link his character to themes of luck and randomness, elements deeply rooted in Japanese culture as symbols of fate and chance. Zoro's grandmother, Shimsuki Friko, is named after a pendulum, and his mother's name, Tara, likely comes from Terrasin, which refers to an entry fee in gambling. Interestingly, on Thriller Bark, there's a zombie named Jigoro who possesses Zoro's shadow. This name might derive from Shigoro, representing the dice roll of 456 in the Japanese game of Chinchinarin, indicating a connection to luck and gambling. It seems Ichiro Odo has imbued Zoro the right-hand man of the Pirate King, with attributes related to chance and gambling. Due to his nature of leaving things to fate and his gambling spirit, Zoro often finds himself on the brink of death, especially when protecting Luffy. He's the kind of character who takes big risks. Among Luffy's crew, Zoro is notably the one who frequently faces mortal peril. Eventually, even the Grim Reaper appears before Zoro. Ichiro Odo has incorporated elements of the moon and death into Zoro's character. The moon is a recurring theme associated with Zoro. If Luffy represents the sun, Zoro symbolizes the moon. When it comes to samurais, Wano Country comes to mind. The Shimotsuki and Kazuki clans, both associated with the moon, are prominent in Wano. The dojo where Zoro trained belongs to the Shimotsuki family, and Kozuki, associated with samurais, literally means light moon, linking back to the lunar theme. Zoro's birthday falls on November 11th, an intriguing sequence known as a double number. His bounty, too, is a double number, 1.11 billion berries. November is called Shimotsuki in the traditional Japanese lunar calendar, which could potentially link to Zoro's name. 
Notably, Zoro's significant moment of action shortly after entering the Grand Line occurred at Whiskey Peak, where he famously took on a hundred opponents. The moon wasn't just a backdrop in this scene. It highlighted the deep connection between Zoro and the lunar element. Furthermore, another crucial theme intertwined with Zoro and the moon is death. Ichiro Oda consistently depicts death alongside the moon. The Kazuki Saga, for instance, introduced tombs, specifically the tombs of Toki, signifying an eternal resting place. Zoro's techniques often carry the motif of the undead's frolic, adding to this theme. In Thriller Bark, the setting around Gekko Moriah was rife with graves and corpses under the moonlight. Even in Whiskey Peak, cactus were illustrated with tomb motifs. When contemplating Zoro, the moon and death emerge as pivotal themes. These two elements conjure the image of a particular country, Mexico. In Mexico, the term Mexico signifies the navel of the moon. It's no coincidence that the setting of Skypea is Mexico, as indicated by the term navel. One of Mexico's renowned World Heritage Sites is Uxmal, depicted in the story as the Golden City of Shandora. Mexico is famously associated with the Culture of the Dead and the Day of the Dead Festival. Iluluku's profound statement, When do you think people die? When they are forgotten! echoes the Mexican cultural sentiment, a theme that resonates with the Disney movie Coco. Furthermore, the character King Taco makes an appearance in the story, symbolizing Mexico with tacos, a staple Mexican dish. King Taco rules over the country of Shishano, intertwining Zorro with themes of the moon and death linked to Mexico. Mexico is recognized for its cacti, green color, the World Heritage Site of Tequila Village, and the Santa Muerte Festival celebrating death. The association of Zorro with Mexico stems from these elements, suggesting Zorro's fate might be intertwined with the sun, potentially leading to his sacrifice. Zorro's significant role in Whiskey Peak, a place with a Mexican influence yet named Whiskey Peak, further ties him to this cultural theme. When you think of Mexico, tequila comes to mind rather than whiskey, right? Tequila is iconic of Mexico, even boasting the Tequila Village, a World Heritage Site. Given the abundance of Mexican elements associated with Zorro, it would seem natural for his place of prominence to be related to tequila. So, why was his major debut at Whiskey Peak, not a Tequila Peak? Could it be that Oda is saving tequila for an even grander showcase of Zorro's prowess in the future? Tequila Wolf remains shrouded in mystery until the final chapters of the story. The name Tequila Wolf itself, with wolf suggesting a connection to the moon, wolves are often associated with moonlit nights and howling at the moon. Interestingly, Zorro's near-death experience during his first appearance was due to cutting down Helmeppo's wolf, which, curiously, shared the same birthday as Zorro. It's said that Ichiro Oda is a fan of gaming, drawing inspiration from titles like Romancing Saga and Final Fantasy for his work. There are numerous models and homages within the series that seem to be influenced by these games. For example, the Seven Warlords of the Sea may very well be modeled after the seven heroes from Romancing Saga. When examining the roles of these seven heroes, we find striking parallels, like Crocodile, who incites civil discord within enemy nations and schemes for control, fits the profile of one such hero. Mihawk stands out as the genius swordsman. Hancock, with her enchanting beauty, mirrors the queen of a warrior women's village. Jimbei and his command over sea currents aligns with a sea controlling character. Kuma, with his mysterious appearances and modified tyrant body, matches a certain hero's traits. 
Doflamingo, cunning and manipulative, operating in the shadows, is akin to a devious puppeteer hero. And Mariah, using zombies and spirits while stealing others' power sources, corresponds to a particular hero known for his unpopular rule over the undead. These correlations suggest a possible model of the Seven Warlords based on the Seven Heroes. Final Fantasy enthusiasts are undoubtedly familiar with the iconic Battle on the Big Bridge track, featuring the swordsman Gilgamesh. In a pivotal moment, Gilgamesh sacrifices himself to save the protagonist, taking enemies down with him. Known for his multiple arms, Gilgamesh's characteristic mirrors Zoro's Asura technique, where he appears to have many arms. This sacrificial battle, known as the Battle on the Big Bridge, may have influenced Zoro's character development. Tequila Wolf has not been prominently featured in the story yet, but its massive bridge seems to be inspired by the iconic Big Bridge, suggesting a possible epic battle involving swordsmen. The name Tequila Wolf, linking to the beverage tequila and the memorable moon from the Baroque work saga, ties back to Zoro, who has been consistently associated with the theme of death since the early stages. It's intriguing to ponder how Ichiro Oda will highlight Zoro in the Tequila Wolf scene. Zoro can be seen as a gambler character, ready to choose death for the sake of his comrades, as hinted at in episode 1036 titled, Bushido is found in death. Zoro is characterized by elements associated with death. His propensity for gambling often leads him to take actions prepared to die for others. However, he seems to always come out on top in these gambles. In Wano, he wins bets and his poor sense of locality ironically ends up saving his crew. He was the first to arrive at Sabote Archipelago, managing to get there by sheer luck. The concept of matching numbers, or Zoro eyes, symbolizes good fortune. Chinchinarin, a game involving rolling matching numbers, signifies luck. The Straw Hat crew and their allies are interconnected. For instance, Sanzi with Cavendish, Frankie with Blue Gilly, and Usopp with Leo. The counterpart to Zoro in this pattern is Bartolomeo, who has green hair and is willing to die for Luffy. Bartolomeo is known as the Lucky King, having been fortunate since childhood, which explains his fondness for cheap sweets. Bartolomeo's journey to the New World was purely based on luck, and his admiration for Luffy sparked when Luffy narrowly escaped execution by a stroke of lightning, a moment of incredible luck. That's all for today. Here on this channel, we post popular theories about One Piece from Japan. If you like One Piece, we would be happy if you could support us by subscribing to our channel and commenting. Thank you for watching till the end. See you in the next video.